Okay, today I am going to do a workshop for you, and it's uh, for many of you to be a little bit of a refresher um, on it. I'm, hopefully, I'm going to be touching uh, several different subjects, so maybe everyone out there will get something out of this segment. But uh, the first thing I wanted to do is just take you back to the member page. So let me show you where we're going with this workshop. Okay, you should have the members dashboard up. The first thing I wanted to do is just make sure everyone understands how you can set up a watch list. So this workshop is really about just giving you some trading tips and tricks on how to use the website and also how to do some scans, how to review the charts, and maybe go through some of the things that I go through when I trade uh, and hopefully wrap it up at the end with uh, determining position size, or at least give you a couple things to think about when you decide how many shares you want to buy. Um, the first thing I want to do is I have a, a chart list down here and you can see I've done workshops and I've got them in order, some of the recent workshops, but I'm going to add another chart list and I want to add it right here. So I'm going to add it with 0604 workshop. So all you have to do is go down to the bottom and click on add new list. And then I can just type in 0604 workshop and let's call this creating a watch list. All right, so there's my create new list. Now, if I go back to the members dashboard and I scroll down now, you will see that I have there's my workshop. I now have a new list. It has zero charts in it because I haven't done anything yet, but I have quickly established a new list. So if you want to set up a watch list, you could call them, you could have multiple lists in order. Um, and maybe the first one is high volume. Uh, the next one could be 50 day test. The next one could be trend line support. Uh, whatever it is that you like to follow, you could have a chart list for that and be able to store your charts in there um, and to look at later for potential trades. Now, what I want to do today, I'm going to go into my scans and let's pull up a high volume scan. I usually run this scan at 10 a.m. Um, and I only and I'll show you what I normally do, but let's edit it. And I'll edit it here. Well, actually, let me just read what it what this does first. So for the last intraday update, this scan is going to look at all U.S. stocks. It is only going to pick up those stocks that has a 90-day simple moving average of volume that's greater than 300,000 shares. I like to make sure I got liquidity in the stocks that I'm looking at. The 90-day simple moving average of the close, so I'm looking at price here for today, is greater than one. So I want to make sure the last 90 days it's averaging at least $1. I mean, some of you might use $5, $10, whatever. Uh, and then finally, this is the big one. Daily volume for today is greater than the 90-day simple moving average of volume for today times 0.4%. Now, uh, or times 0.4, not 0.4%. Um, the reason I do this is at 10 o'clock in the morning, you wouldn't expect that a stock would be trading 40% of its average volume in the first 30 minutes. That's So what this scan would be picking up are stocks that are uh, trading unusually heavy volume, but they also have to meet the liquidity requirements that I set. Their average volume has to be at least 300,000 shares. Now that's what I would do at 10 a.m. Well, it's not 10 a.m., it's 12.30, 12.35. So I'm gonna change this, but before I change it, this is in the, um, the basic scan workbench. I wanna uh, switch over and let's click on this advanced scan workbench so you can see how this would show up in the advanced scan workbench, okay? Uh, I'm gonna change this now from 0 0.4 because this would pick up a lot of stocks. We're past, we're almost halfway point of the day. So normal volume, if I put in 0 0.5, would probably pick up quite a few stocks. I'm gonna double that and go 1.0 and let's just see what comes up. I always check syntax, make sure the syntax is correct, which it is, and then I run scan and let's see how many we get. All right, 150. For the purposes of what we're doing here, that's fine. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna dump these 150 stocks into that list that I just created. So of, under available actions, I can replace an existing chart list with these results. Then I scan down, I find my the one I just set up, 0604 workshop creating a watch list. I select it and I click okay. And now all of a sudden, my list 
it has 100 and whatever it was, 150 stocks in it. Okay. Now, the next thing that I would do is once I have them in this list, I've run a scan. Uh, I could run lots of different scans. I ran a high volume scan, got this. It's now in this list. And I could do a couple of things. I can just pull it up and review charts. Uh, so let me show you here. I could do 10 per page. I got 150 stocks in here, though. It's going to take me a little while to go through, you know, these 10 at a time, even as quickly as I can go through. It's still going to take a while. So maybe one thing you could think about doing now that I've got 150 stocks in this list is now let's go down to scans again. And I'm going to pull up this RSI 40 to 50 scan um, and edit this. Now, it's right now set up so that it's going to go into my strong earnings folder. Well, I don't really want to go into that strong earnings folder. I want to go into the folder we just set up. So I can scroll down here, pick up this 0604 workshop, creating a watch list. And now I'm running the scan against this watch list that I just set up. And what it's looking for are stocks that have RSIs between 40 and 50. Now, why would I be interested in that? Well, what I have found over the years is that when you're in an uptrending stock, normally when you get these pullbacks, the RSI will hold somewhere in that 40 to 50 range. I mean, maybe it goes into the upper 30s, maybe it gets to 51 or 52, but a lot of them, a lot of stocks that I buy have RSIs in the 40s. So this is a, a scan that I like to run. So now I've got the scan, I'm doing it versus this, uh, this watch list. I'm only running it against this watch list. I'm gonna update my criteria now because right now it's showing strong earnings stocks. I gotta update my criteria because I changed that. And now I can run my scan. And so now I'm running a scan of the watch list I just created. And look at this, now I'm down to 18 stocks. So I'm going from high volume stocks, which there were 150 of them, and I only want to look at the ones that have RSIs from 40 to 50. I just narrowed it down to 18. And so now I'm going to put it in a different. I'm going to replace an existing chart list. I have scan results set up. And high volume is here. Here's RSI 40 to 50. I'm just going to drop them in here and click OK. And now my 18 stocks are in the scan results folder for the RSI 40 to 50. Now I'm going to pull them up by 10 per page. Now I'm going to review the charts. So we've set up the watch list. We've run a scan against it. And now I'm reviewing charts. All right. So as I go through, this one's selling off on pretty big volume. You could say, well, it's at a key support level. Um, you know, it, it's okay. I'd keep it on here. This one's breaking down right now below the 50 day moving average. I don't know. You can, there's this little trash can button as you're going through the uh, 10 charts per page, and I'm just going to click on that, delete it. So that's gone. Uh, I'm not looking for ETFs, so gone. Uh, here's an ETN, gone. Uh, this is a triple bearish ETF, gone. Uh, okay, now I get to this one. EC, Echo Patrol SA. Now I'm looking for stocks that are in uptrends that have pulled back to RSI 40 to 50, and you can see there's the RSI <clears throat> between 40 and 50. And the other thing kind of catches my eye here is I'm going to click on this one and take it to a different page so I can annotate it. I'm going to annotate this. And if you notice, when we set this last high, check out what the PPO was doing. So we have a negative divergence on the last high. Now I always say, well, yeah, but you got to be careful if there's volume coming in on the breakout. It's hard to argue negative or slowing momentum if it's a big volume breakout. Well, the problem here is that when you look at the volume on this breakout on May 14th, look where the volume is. That is not big volume. That's average volume at best. Many of these days were triple, uh, almost triple the volume that we saw on this day on the breakout. So you got a breakout with average volume with a negative divergence, not good. What I look for is no longer the 20 day holding support, but I look for a 50 day test and the a move back down to test the PPO center line. And if you look back on this chart, we saw essentially the same thing here back at the end of um, at the end of January here. 
right there with the lower PPO, higher price. Now, in this case, we did have heavy volume, but we didn't hold the breakout level. And when we failed to hold the breakout level and we lost the 20 day moving average, pretty good indication we were going to uh, consolidate for a while, maybe get that 50 day test. You could see the 50 day almost tested here. Eventually we did after sideways consolidation. And when all that happened, look at what happened to your RSI here back in that 40, 50 range. So when you're looking at an uptrending chart, when what you don't want to do is buy a stock that's breaking out with a negative divergence. I'm not a big fan of that. And especially even if it's big volume, if it can't hold on to that breakout level with a negative divergence, you're probably going to get a total unwinding of that negative divergence, meaning that I'm going to look for a PPO back to the center line. I'm going to look for 50 day tests and from there, perhaps start a new uptrend. That's what we did in March and April. And I think that's what we could do here with EC. So I've set up my watch list. I've run my scans. I've reviewed charts. And I just found one now here. It's sitting at the 50-day moving average. It's not too far from what I would consider some pretty good price support. Um, if we go back here and we take this prior high, look at this breakout on very heavy volume. We started pulling back. We got close on Friday to hitting this support level. Uh, along with the PPO hitting center line, the RSI in the you know 40 to 50 range, all of a sudden this one is lining up to me to be a little bit better. So then the question becomes, well, you know what is it a part of? What industry group? What sector? Um, is this a stock that I want to be a part of? Um, because I like the chart. And so what I would say at that point is to pull up the relative chart that I, I style. That's what I would do next. And when I pull this up, what I see is a stock that's been breaking out. Notice that it's industry group, the DJ USOL, which is the integrated oil and gas, is actually lower on its most recent high than it was back in January. But look at EC. So we've actually got a leader here in this space. So if you like the space, then it's kind of easy to like the stock. Now you can't really, well, I guess you could see here, we've got some pretty interesting support. The last pullback was right around 575 and that's where we're sitting on the DJ USOL. So if, if this support holds and we start to turn up, we'd be trading a stock that is one of the leaders in this space. So here you can see the EC relative to the integrated oil and gas. Look at this relative uptrend that we've been in. And even with the group falling back, it's actually starting to turn back up again here with relative strength. So I like the group uh, relative to the S&P. EC's done well. If there's one negative, it's that the relative strength uh, has failed to hold support. Here you can see actual. This is absolute support. And here is relative support. So the group relative to the S&P 500 is weakened some over the past few weeks. And again, that's because of the, the dollar or the uh, oil prices falling. Many of the uh, energy stocks have taken a big hit. But again, we know that the crude oil prices are approaching support. So this is an area where I really feel like this is a stock in a group that needs to bounce at the current price. So I could make an argument that I want to be in this stock. So then the question is, what's the reward to risk? How do I trade this? And I would say at this point, I'm just going to pull up EC so we can look a little bit closer at the numbers here. Uh, there's a couple of things. To minimize risk, you can always get in twice, two entry points. And so one thing I would consider is maybe the uh, if you wanted to do current price where it's sitting right now at 2102, I'd probably use a second entry of about 1975, which would have a uh, combined weighted entry of roughly – What's that? Uh, buck twenty-seven. So that's sixty-three cents. So it's twenty thirty-nine would be the average price of those two entry points. Twenty-one oh two and nineteen seventy-five would get us back to an average entry of twenty thirty-nine. So let me just put this down here. So what I would be looking at is an entry twenty thirty-nine target. Well, I'm looking at it to go back up and hit twenty-three dollars. So I'm thinking $23 and my stop would be a close below 19, let's call it 1950. All right. Now, when I look at this, if I get both my entries, I will risk 89 cents on this trade down to the 1950 stop, but I'll have $2 and 61 cents to the upside. 
So I've got almost a three to one reward to risk, which I like. If I can get it, I want to make sure I have at least two to one when I get into a trade. But if it's three to one or four to one or even better would be six to one, eight to one, 10 to one, something like that. Because when you think about it, if you get into it, if you get into all your trades that are three to one reward to risk and you only hit one trade and then lose three, you're going to break even. If you actually, if one of your four picks goes and hits the target, you're going to make, uh, in this case, was that two dollars sixty one cents? You're going to make roughly eleven percent, something like that. Um, but when you lose, if you lose eighty nine cents, you're going to lose what four percent or three three and a half percent or whatever that number four percent, I guess. Um, but anyway, so you got eleven or twelve percent upside. You got four percent to the downside. So if you have one winner that gets you twelve percent, and you have three losers that lose 4%, you break even. So one of the the keys with trading success is setting up reward to risks that make sense. Now, if I get in here at 2102 and I, and I put my entire position in here, then my risk to the downside becomes this, this trade is much different. 2102 down to 1950 is a buck 52 downside. 2102 to 23 is a buck 98 to the upside. All of a sudden I barely have better than one to one risk. So if I'm going to do this trade, I've got to do it in increments. If I get half a position here and it never goes down to 1975 then, and it goes to 23, then I only have half a position, but I cash out on half a position, which is still fine by me. Now, how many shares should I buy? How do I determine a position size here? Well, this is a tricky question um, because number one, I've got to stop here. I'm using a closing stop. What happens if the stock goes through intraday and all of a sudden it's 1850 intraday, that's going to really change this reward to risk picture a lot. You're going to be risking a lot more than you thought by having a stop at 1950. If intraday it's at 1850, I think the toughest part about trading is trying to decide whether or not you want an intraday stop or a closing stop. Because many times, look at this stock or look at this day's action way below the 20 day moving average. And then we come back up and we, we go back above it and hold it. And then three days later, we take off. We're up another 7%. These false breakdowns can trigger big moves to the upside. So when you get stopped out on an intraday basis below support level, you could be getting stopped out right before you get a big reversal that marks a major bottom. That's the risk of getting out on an intraday basis. But let's just use the numbers here. And I'm going to use 2040 instead of 2039 to make the number. Actually, let's use 2050 to make it a lot easier to do the math. So let's say the entry was 2050 and my stop is 1950. That's a dollar you're willing, willing to risk. What you have to ask yourself is how much are you willing to risk on a trade? If you've got a $100,000 portfolio and you're willing to risk $1,000 on a trade, not invest 1,000, but risk losing $1,000 of your portfolio in order to make $3,000 on your portfolio, then you would look at this if the entry was 2050 and you've got a dollar to the downside and you're, uh, you're willing to give it $1,000, you were willing to lose $1,000, the math is pretty simple. I could buy 1,000 shares. I buy 1,000 shares if the number was 2050. I buy 1,000 shares at 2050. If it goes down just below 1950, I get stopped out, I lose $1,000. If the stock turns around and goes to 23, in that example, at 2050, I'd make $2.50 times 1,000, I'd make 2,500. So at 2050, my reward to risk would be two, two and a half to one. Um, but that is now for 100,000, you might say, well, $20,000 is an okay amount. Others might say, well, no, no, I don't wanna put 20% into a position. Keep in mind, this is my last point. I'm a short-term trader. I'm not trying to buy a stock and hold it for the long term. If I was going to do that, I think 20% in one stock is a lot. As a short-term trader, just trying to capture the inefficiencies of the market, I'm looking to get in and out of this position pretty quickly. And I'm, I'm trading almost all stocks in my strong earnings chart list because I don't want big surprises. Not that they can't have them, but my experience has been that if they've just reported numbers that beat Wall Street's estimates, top and bottom line, they tend... And again, in my experience, I haven't done any kind of formal study, but my experience is that I haven't had too many surprises where all of a sudden they come out one morning and warn for the next quarter. 
not if they just beat top and bottom line. Um, so anyhow, that's uh, how I would consider using the, uh, uh, you know, the reward to risk and calculating your entry target and stop to justify the number of shares uh, that you're going to buy. Now, I might, sometimes I might look at this and if, if I did get in at this level or if I got in at the entry of 2050 and I know my stop's 1950, I kind of factor in the, what if it does go below that 1950? What am I going to do? Um, am I just going to take my stop intraday below 1950? Am I going to let it go a little bit further? And if I'm going to let it go further, then I might not want the thousand shares because that's going to create more than a thousand dollar loss. I might, may only want to do 500 shares. Um, to give myself a little bit more room so that I don't lose more than what I anticipated losing on the trade. So there's a lot that goes into it, but hopefully these will give you some ideas to think about. All right, so uh, let me pull up a summary for the things that we went over and uh, started off by talking about a watch list, showed you how you can set up a watch list. I ran scans against that watch list. We reviewed some of the charts, pulled up one particular stock. We evaluated the relative strength calculated the reward to risk, determined position size. And now I want to just pull up the trading pole and just see how often everybody trades. I'll tell you, for me, I could trade quite a bit um, on a monthly basis. I'm probably, I'm probably in the more than 10 times a month. Um, I'm not going to say every month, but most months I would trade more than 10 times a month. And that's about 37% of you. Six, zero to five times, uh, 44%. That is the, the majority of those responding to the poll actually trade a uh, relatively few number of times during the month, but uh, right on the heels, 38% is more than 10 times a month. So, and then six to 10 times a month, 19%. So more than half of you trade at least six times a month. So uh, more than once a week. Anyhow, I thought that was kind of interesting, the poll and Aaron, I'm assuming you're probably in that zero to five. Uh, that is correct. Per month. Yeah. Zero to five times. So you're in the 43%. I'm in the 38%. Yep. I, so. It is, you know, everybody has their own style. And, you know, if I do feel like doing a few more trades than that per month based on, you know, what the, what my scans are giving me and that sort of thing. And, you know, the setups, I, I'll trade more than that, but typically it's zero to five times per month. I ha I hold my positions a lot longer. Yeah. I hold mine about as long as I can hold my breath sometimes. <laughs> 